In this video, we're going to discuss the idea of strong mathematical induction. Now, we've seen the idea of mathematical induction before. This is the idea where if you wanted to climb a sort of infinite ladder of claims, then what you needed to do was to be able to get on the ladder at some point, as in you needed to have a basis case that you'd prove P of A, and then you had this induction step where you said, look, if I'm on one rad rung of the ladder, say PK, I want to be able to get to the next rung, the K plus one rung. So that was normal old induction. What we're going to do in this video is something called strong induction. And it's related, but allows you to prove a slightly more general set of claims. So the goal here is that we want to be able to prove some property, some P of N is true. And P of N here is this whole infinite family of claims, depending on the N. In particular, we want to do it for all N bigger than or equal to A. Often the A here is 1, but it doesn't have to be. Then the way strong induction works is that there's going to be two distinct steps. So the first step, this is referred to as the basis step. And what we do here is I'm not just going to prove it for PA, as you might imagine. That's what we would have done in regular old induction. We would prove that the first one was true. I'm going to prove that PA, and then I'm going to prove that PA plus 1, and then I'm going to keep on doing this for just some finite number. I'm going to go up to a PB here. So in other words, my first claim is A, and then I go and prove a bunch of them, like say three or four of the different claims, and I go from all the way up to A to the B, and I, I want to prove each of these. These are usually the easier steps in our induction proof, just kind of like the way that proving the first one, usually it involves just plugging in some actual numbers, like let's say A was 1 and B was 4. You would just have to plug in n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, and n equal to 4 into your claim and see whether they were true. So usually that's relatively straightforward. But there has been this complication that instead of just having a single uh, thing to consider in your basis step, we have this collection of different things. All right, step two. This gets a little bit more complicated as well. In your so-called induction step, In regular old induction, what we did was we assumed that the statement was true at the kth level and showed it was true at the kth plus oneth level. What we're going to do here is we're going to assume it's true at the kth level and all of the levels beneath it. I'm going to assume it's true for all of the lower levels, and then I'm going to show that it's true for the kth plus oneth. So in other words, the conclusion showing it's true for the kth plus oneth level, that's the same, so in other words, this isn't changing for the conclusion. It's still going to be the case I'm trying to prove the k plus 1th level. But what's changing here is that instead of just assuming the kth level, I'm assuming all of the lower levels. All right, so I am going to assume that I'm going to index it by something called i. I'm going to assume pi. And the way this is going to work is that your i is just some sort of index variable that runs between your starting point, the A, up to that value of K. So it's going to be some index, and I'm, I'm proving this sort of finite collection of claims. And then we're going to prove P K plus 1. And if I'm able to do both of those two things, I'm able to do the basis step and this induction step, then I'm going to get my claim P of N for all values of N greater than or equal to A. All right, so let's see an example. And this example is going to be some property about a particular sequence. So let me define for you the sequence first. This is the sequence where the first term is just equal to the value of 1. The second term, the a2, is going to be equal to the value of the 3. And then if I want to speak about the general term, it's going to work like this. The generic kth term is going to be defined what we're going to say is recursively. What it's going to be is that the, the ak is going to be equal to a k minus 2 plus twice a k minus 1. So we have to understand what we mean by this, but, but this is a so-called recursive definition. 
And we use the word recursive any time where one entry in the sequence depends on previous entries in the sequence. In this case, to get to the AK, you need to know what AK minus 2 is and what AK minus 1 is. So for example, I could use this and I could figure out that the value of A3, for example, I haven't done that one yet, is equal to whatever the value of A1 is plus twice the value of A2. A1 is A3 minus 2 and A2 is A3 minus 1. But because I know what those are already, I can come and plug them in. A1 is 1 and A3 is going to be 2, so plus twice times 3 is equal to the value of 7. Now, I claim the following. I claim that the AK is going to be odd always. As in, we've seen it's true for 1 and 2 and 3, we get the values of 1 and 3 and 7 out, all three of those values are all going to be odd, but are we convinced that this is always true? So I'm going to prove this claim and I'm going to prove it by strong induction. All right. so. In my proof, I'm going to look at step one first. This is my basis step. I have to think about what's appropriate for me to assume. Notice that to get to the A3, I had to look back at the A2 and the A1. So it seems like you needed to have those two things known first. So I'm going to, in my basis, I'm going to show that this is true for P1 and for P2. In other words, I'm going to note that a1, which was just 1, and a2, which is equal to 3, are both odd. So this is my basis completed. I've, I've looked at the a1, I've looked at the a2, they both have this property, and that's going to be sufficient. All right, so now let's go on to the induction step. So then I'm going to be in the step 2. So I am going to assume that A, and I use the subscript I for that generic indexing value, as I sort of did up there as well, I'm going to assume that A, I is going to be odd for all the values. Notice that I started at 1, so from 1 all the way up to I, up to the value of K. All right, now let's look and study this A, K plus 1. Now, I want to note for a moment that if we go back to the original formula that we have here, this was the definition. This told us that a k was related to the things 2 less than it and 1 less than that. That's what our defining formula was going to give us. So because I'm now looking at a k plus 1, 2 things less than a k plus 1 is a k plus 1 minus 1 minus 2 is a k minus 1. So I'm claiming that this is equal to a k minus 1, and then plus twice a k. That this is the two different levels, 1 and 2 beneath a k plus 1. However, we know that both of these are going to be odd by our assumption. So this is going to be odd, and this is going to be odd, and this is true by our induction hypothesis by this assumption that we have here that all of these previous level ones are going to be odd. So how does that help me? Well, if they're both odd, then I know that I can write them in the familiar 2p plus 1 way. So in other words, I'm going to write the first one as it's an odd number, so I'm going to write it down as a 2p plus 1. The second one's got this big 2 out the front, and then I have to use something else. I'll use how about 2q plus 1. And this is going to be true for p and q being some integers. That's what it meant to be odd. And we've assumed they were odd by my induction hypothesis. All right, going to do a little bit of algebra to clean this up here. I'm going to put all the stuff with 2s on the left-hand side. So in other words, I'm going to have a 2. Looks like I've got a p. Then I'm going to have a 2q. Notice there's a 2 times 2, which is a 4. And there's a 2 times 2, which is a 4. Then finally... Uh, plus a 1, and then finally, 1 more plus 1. So what is this? This is going to be 2 times something plus 1. As in, this is my claim, this is an odd integer. 
So my a k plus 1 is odd. And that therefore concludes my proof by the strong principle of mathematical induction.